I have to keep putting this in. Good news again. <laughs> the year of the vegan, I just love it. <laughs> But more headlines, um, I'm uh, suddenly in the past couple of years um, on, across my desk, I'm getting very frequent papers and comments on um, uh, switching to the vegan diet. Um, not only for your personal health, but for the health of the planet. We have to switch to a vegan planet so we can keep a planet. Um, so, uh, no, 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 that, that's, that's not a nasty bratwurst burger. That's, uh, it's not difficult to be vegan now, right? Uh, years ago, it used to be a bit tough, you know, carrot stick and a, uh, you know, a bit of celery. Um, but, <laughs> but we have all these great products now, great food products. And so this is all uh, vegan. Here's David Attenborough. Now, David, David's really interesting because, um, uh, for one thing, he's in his 90s. Um, uh, he's one of the most popular, successful um, uh, television programmers on nature. Um, David Suzuki in Canada would be the other one. And, and he was at the um, uh, last uh, climate convention in Poland. Humans need to stop eating meat to reduce climate change crises. Okay, well, he, um, uh, why is David Attenborough interesting? Well, he's very interesting because he was a climate skeptic. So there are a number of people who genuinely just don't understand it. So really, we've not been getting it across very well. We've not been explaining it very well. Um, but now he's in his 90s and he's come on full bore um, uh, for taking on the climate emergency. Another one. This is my favorite um, magazine for science. It's called Science Daily. And the headline here, you see it's January 2019. Diet and food production must radically change to save the planet. So transformation of the global food system is urgently needed um, uh, because there are these many reasons why our modern industrial um, food production system, um, highly successful though it is, the amount of food that the United States puts out um, per acre of land is phenomenal. I mean, it really is amazing, but we can't do it like that anymore. And the research suggests that we don't have to. We can produce as much food with organic and uh, uh, regenerative agriculture. Nitrogen fertilizers, of course. That's nitrous oxide. Um, the Guardian is one of the um, papers that has been great on climate change. The Guardian has been super on climate change. The other paper in the United States is the LA Times. The LA Times has been consistently great on reporting very well um, uh, all the terrible news as it comes out. And um, uh, this is from a Lancet study on uh, sustainability of the food system with respect to human health and also um, including planetary health. And so they've had this big report out recently uh, that the global food system is causing an ecological and health catastrophe. So y you folk and what you're doing here, you're, you're the solution. This is really, really great, you know, and um, you're succeeding. Um, modern Western diet, ecological catastrophe. Now, um, this is getting a bit scientific-y, but, but you really, you, uh, if you're a vegan, you're really going to like looking at this. This is a study that was done back in 2016, and this is one of the studies um, that's led to the climate experts um, coming on side and saying, yep, 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 we got to stop eating meat and we've got to think about going vegan. See those, those bottom lines below, okay? That's the environmental impact with respect to the emissions, and the top one is fruit and vegetables, and then the one beneath is animal products. See animal products? Way, way, way over all the other foods with respect to its greenhouse gas emissions and uh, its global heating and warming effect. So you see that food, this will show you that food production emissions are even more than industry. Can you imagine? Emissions from agriculture and what the IPCC, the agriculture and what the IPCC here um, calls animal husbandry is more than industry emissions. Uh, less, 
but more than half, I think, even of um, all energy emissions. So this is huge. This is absolutely huge. Animal husbandry, of course, means killing animals and eating them. But we like to put things in different language, don't we? Um, this is the effect over 20 years. Um, th th this is just part of a very important um, uh, chart that the 2014 IPCC has. So for years and years, I, I've been saying, okay, well, how can we communicate this, you know, in more simple terms? Well, suddenly I realized there are just two main sources of emissions, you know. One is the one that everybody knows, that's energy, and the other one is the one that people aren't told about, which is food production. So we've got two main sources, energy and food. So here's an illustration, and there's food production on one side and power production on the other side. Images of livestock, cattle, um, deforestation, etc., etc. Now this slide um, shows something else as well. The science isn't dealing with climate change in the right way. Um, climate change is pollution. It's pollution. It's the worst pollution we've ever had. But it's not being called pollution and it's not being treated as pollution. It's being treated just as climate change. And there's far more in the way of impacts that the pollution from the sources of greenhouse emissions does to our population and our planet than just only the climate change. And also, it makes a huge difference to the cost of continuing to be dependent on fossil fuels. So um, uh, I've written um, published papers on this. And um, so there are the sources of greenhouse gas emissions and neatly divided between energy production and distribution and food production and distribution. Now, the, I'm not, I don't want to give the impression that, that there's the same amount of emissions from food production as energy, but, but it's not that far off, actually. Um, uh, Oh, and there's another emission, which is black carbon soot. And uh, so this even includes the uh, um, people in India, etc. Um, uh, they should all be provided with solar ovens because the, um, uh, the, the poor people there are uh, cooking their food with wood and charcoal. And that emits black carbon soot. In this part of the world, black carbon soot is mainly emitted by diesel, diesel trucks, ships, etc. And black carbon soot, the scientists have recently discovered, is second only to carbon dioxide in its contribution to warming. So actually black carbon soot is our ace in the hole. Um, not, not enough attention is being given to this. Uh, James Hansen published a paper, a paper on it in um, God, uh, 2020, if not earlier. Um, and of course, uh, tropical forest loss is accelerating. And that's another reason for going vegan, right? Because 80% of the tropical forests are being cleared for food and for pasture to real livestock, eat meat, uh, which does our bodies all kinds of damage and, of course, is wrecking the planet. Not to mention, but we should mention, all the, uh, all the species and the life which is being turfed out. They're losing their homes. So this is just um, my image to show the agricultural source of greenhouse gas emissions and you just have to see that all three emissions are emitted. Um, Methane is emitted, carbon dioxide is emitted, and nitrous oxide is emitted. So agriculture is big and uh, that's one that we can certainly uh, so-called fix.